right, welcome, welcome, welcome back again with another video. And it's only going to get bigger and better. We have with us our usual expert analysis, Davion, here in the house. And joining us today, expert, super expert analysis, Ricardo Blake. This man would have even played some cricket alongside Chadwick Walton during their tenure at UWI. So, welcome, Ricardo. Thanks for having me, man. All right, so let's get straight into it. 2024. Happy New Year, Davian. Happy New Year, Ricardo. Happy New Year, gentlemen. Happy New Year to you, Ronaldo. Happy New Year to you, um, Ricardo. Happy New Year, man. Happy New Year to the viewers. And Happy New Year, of course, for West Indies cricket. So, first thing, let's get started. Looking at this 2024 um, cycle for West Indies, um, looking at the fixtures for us, T20, ODI, and Test Cricket. Um, first thing I'll put you on the floor, Ricardo. Um, what, what's your assessment of the fixtures for 2024 for West Indies? Um, I think starting with Australia, we could not have asked for a tougher test, right? Um, pun intended, of course, because <laughs> you know, of course, we'll be meeting them in a test series in a, in a, you know, a couple of weeks. So, um, that's going to be tough for us. Um, of course, it, 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 it should be good for our young players. Um, so that's a tough start for us. Um, looking at the white ball schedule, I, I expect great things from, from us throughout this year in white ball cricket. We had a really good ending to 2023. Um, albeit against a, a, an England team that looked a bit suspect um, in the past few months in white ball cricket, but we cannot deny their quality. And I thought that we were excellent during that series, right? So we have to give credit to our boys as well. So I am looking forward to our white ball um, exploits this year. I am not so sure about the test cricket. Um, let us see where the, the squad um, goes from here. It, it's, it's, in my mind, a weak squad going to Australia. I don't suspect that that will continue throughout the year. I, you know, I think this was just for the moment. So let us see where the selectors go from here, where Test Cricket is concerned. Definitely, definitely. 100% agree. We ended the year, Stella, in white ball cricket. Now, Davian, I'll come to you and... Um, Question I'm going to ask for you, Davian, is looking at this schedule, right? Um, are you satisfied with the number of test matches or ODI matches that we're going to play for this year, 2024? We're going to play, what, seven tests, 12 ODIs, 15 T20s. And this is excluding, of course, the T20s in the World Cup. So it can be a lot more. So, Davian, what is your thoughts on the number of tests and ODIs were playing in comparison to T20s for 2024. All right. This go to show that uh, opponent teams, when you look at the three formats, tests, ODI, and T20, teams are realizing that it doesn't make any sense to really engage West Indies much in tests. If you look at most of our results, apart from us losing most of the tests, we're losing these tests in within three days. So there is loss of revenue there. So they're saying that, okay, do mostly the T20s, which you know will be more competitive and bring you more money. So unless we improve uh, for the seven tests, if we win majority or draw most of those seven tests, we will see in the next future tour program where we have more tests. Where we keep on having dismal um, test results, you got, you got to have more cases of we touring teams and team touring us where they will have either two test series, we get worse, or one test series, or they just have just only white ball legs. We see for October tour for Sri Lanka, we're touring Sri Lanka, but there's no, there's no test. 
just three ODI and three T20. So that would be the norm going forward if we continue this mild result in, in tests. For the ODI, we have seen where 2023, we won an ODI series against England, first time at home, 25 years. We won a one ODI against, in, against India, also one ODI against South Africa. So T may gamble more with having ODI series with us, but again, with ODI series, they will not pass three. Let's have three ODI series, so going forward, we will not see what's in it engaged in typical five ODI series like in the past. For the T20, teams will, will gamble and have three T20 series, a total of five T20 series, because there's value based on how we play T20 cooking. The, even if they lose the series or we win, their players uh, would be improving. All right, definitely. Um, definitely can relate to your answer there um, with regards to the results in our test cricket. Now, now Ricardo, if we look at England, Australia, um, India, they're playing like 13 and 15 test matches. As Davian just brought it up, we're getting two test match series, three test match series. So in total, seven tests for 2024. Now, my question to you, Ricardo, is um, even if we're supposed to get more test match cricket, looking at our calendar, how is it going to be feasible or practical for us to fit in any more test match throughout the throughout the cricketing year? Uh, it will it will definitely take a lot of planning, right? Um, we see where the the, 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 the Australia's and England and those nations that are playing good cricket right now in in in, in what in uh, in the test arena. We see where they are able to get in a number of test matches, number of one day internationals, just like us, and also getting in T20. So I think we can. The problem is, as was mentioned earlier, is just our lack of quality in the test arena. But to go a bit further, I, I also want to suggest that as bad as the results are, I also believe that if we had players who who were entertaining players who could bring out crowds, I think these 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 top test play nations may take a chance and have a one or two test match series against us. Right? But we are not playing good cricket, we are not getting the results, and we don't have the players who are going to bring out the crowds either. If we if we could look back to say 15 20 years ago i don't think the results were necessarily any better than now but what happened is that we had top quality test players so we had we had you know people like shanda paul we had lara toward the end of his career we had players like those and those those players could bring out the crowds so india australia um south africa those countries they know that listen we play West Indies, yes, we may defeat them 3-0 or 4-1 or 2-1 or 2-0. But guess what? We are going to get some revenues because they have players who, are, who people are going to come out to see. We don't have that anymore. As a matter of fact, the brand of test cricket that we're playing is probably <laughs> the worst in the world right now. <laughs> I, it's, 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 it's just obnoxious. It's... You, you just cannot, even as a West Indian fan, it's hard to sit and watch West Indies play test cricket these days. So I think we can get in more test matches, but as you say, we are just not at a point where teams are going to readily um, in, enter into any talks with us as it relates to fitting test cricket into a tight schedule. Definitely, definitely. 100% agree. I remember 2009, West Indies beat England, I think, 1-0. And I went to Sabina and it was jam-packed just to see Gail, Brendan Nash, Sarwan, and Shanda Paul. And it's not as if the results were any better than now. But, of course, the quality of the play matters. I love that. All right, so let's jump into now or 
test cricket now or test fixtures test fixtures for the year 2024 um first thing let me start with you davian let's look at our test fixtures we have two tests away against um australia then we have our first class four day regional championship then we go to england for another three test match and then of course we play two test match in the Caribbean, at home here against the Tigers, Bangladesh. So, Davion, your thoughts on, on the fixtures and also um, what are your expe expectations from West Indies for the year 2024 as it relates to Test cricket? All right. So, starting off with Australia, <clears throat> um, for the results for the two tests, I'm expecting the result to be 1 0 in the favor of Australia. I believe we'll be able to draw one of the games, I think. The first game, we'll lose heavily. And the second, they will put themselves together and push Australia to the final day. For the three tests in England, we do have bowlers who can exploit the conditions expertly. Uh, we have Kyle Myers. As you know, he, he created a lot of problems for England when they tour here. So I expect the... I think for this year, I believe we'll be beating England 2-1 um, in England this year. I, I believe we have some exciting young bowlers coming through. Azari Joseph getting more mature. Kemar Roach will hold his end. So we have the bowling. I know that England is they're very susceptible to collapses. So I, I think in the games where they collapse, those are the games uh, we'll win. For our home fixture against Bangladesh, definitely we win 2 0. Yeah, so I expect us to win two out of the three test series. But for the first class, regional four day championship, I'm looking forward to the French players, the players who normally play in the West Indies A tour, for them to really, the batters dominate, making runs, and also the bowlers taking plenty of rickets. In previous year, seasons, we have seen where it's the same batters making the bulk of the runs. And the same bowlers taking the rickets. So for us to go forward, we really need, need some other um, players knocking down the door to really make the scene a team. All right. Now, before I pass over the same question to you, Ricardo, you yes. mentioned a very important point about the brand of cricket that we play in test. So uh, coming up against baseball in England and Australia, you know, the mighty Australians in their backyard. Um, how do you see um, our year going as it relates to Test cricket? I wish I was as hopeful as Davian. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I have been watching Australia against Pakistan. I don't think we stand a chance in Australia. I am hoping that we can get at least one of the Test matches to three days. That is what I am personally hoping for. Um, as you said, Australia is certainly not the place to go and play negative cricket. If you're going to challenge Australia, you have to go at them, especially at home. They are bullies, and that's the only way you can get into their heads. You have to play attacking cricket. You have to be positive, not reckless, not careless, but positive cricket. And as I say, the way we are playing test cricket now, we are going to set up ourselves to, to fail miserably in Australia if we continue on that path. To be quite frank, I would rather see West Indies play positive cricket and uh, lose a couple of close matches and, and, and get 2-0. As opposed to, we just go there, we just turn up, we, 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 we hope to play. Because what I've been seeing from... Um, Craig Brathwaite and, and his style is from day one, it seems as if we're playing for a draw, which cannot be the, 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 the right approach, right? Um, so let us see what the approach is. But at this point, based on what I've seen over the past year, year and a half, I am not so hopeful for us in Australia. Likewise, now, in England. Not, not to cut you, but you mentioned an important po point about playing negative cricket. But looking at the squad, apart from Alec Athanas, 
and maybe Kirk McKenzie, maybe mm -hmm. all the other batters tend to go at a strike rate between about 20 to 45. So where are the batters that are going to play that positive style of cricket that you'd want us to play in Australia? And I think I think it's 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 a mindset. It's really a mindset because I mean, all it takes for you to move your strike rate from say twenty or thirty up to fifty, sixty, which is acceptable in Test cricket, right? Um, take England out of it with their baseball. Um, Australia sometimes, um, and a couple maybe India sometimes. Fifty, sixty strike rate is pretty good in test cricket you're going at three three and a half runs per over that's that's good in test cricket so for me it's just a mindset um three three and a half runs per over in test cricket it's not about hitting the boundaries especially in australia in australia there are so many threes available you just have to be positive play the ball around in the gaps look for the ones and twos when i mean if you get an excellent delivery there's really nothing you can do about that but I don't see the purpose of you just, you get, a fi um, you know, I mean, an ordinary delivery, so to speak, and you just block it. There's no purpose. You're not looking to score any at all. I, I cannot agree with that type of, type of approach. I am totally against that type of cricket. So as I say, it just takes a change of mindset as far as I'm concerned. I don't think these players are poor technically. They may not be the best when we look at what, is required for you know top class test cricket but they are in the test squad so they have to turn up they have to show up and they have to make a name for themselves basically so you just go out there play positive cricket it may even be to their advantage australia may not know a lot of these players they are not a lot probably not a lot of footage out there of them because it's a lot you know a number of young players players who are not experienced on the world scene so that may be something that they can use to their advantage in this test series definitely um so continue go ahead now state your expectations for um, for us for 2020 as it relates to england um we tend to give england some problems uh, um, even when we're you know not at our best i don't know they, you know they normally talk about matchups in sports i know there are some persons out there who don't believe in matchups but I'm, I'm a big believer in matchups i believe that sometimes your strength just really plays on the weakness of an, of an opponent now west indies i think in test cricket our bowling has been our best attribute for a couple of years now we we we, we have some bowlers in the test arena who can match up to most other test bowlers um and especially in english conditions as davian would have mentioned earlier azari joseph seems to be coming of age um he has space and he has the ability to move the ball around kemar roach we know what he can do in test cricket. he has proven himself before so i think we do have some decent bowlers um if jason holder makes the trip we know what he can do in England, English conditions. So I think we can put up a challenge there. I I am hoping that we could draw that series. That that's that's my best hope right now. So I think we can get so um a positive um return from that from that test series. So um the last two series in England, we mm -hmm. lost 2-1 in favor of England in 2017 and we lost 2-1 in COVID times 2020 and you're saying no a draw would be good that would be improvement I, I I would accept a draw especially if we play good cricket and challenge the English all right and of um, course tune in for Bangladesh Bangladesh yeah I, I think we we should take that one at home no I mean no questions asked you know Bangladesh is you know they're a solid team they have some really good cricketers but I think we should be too much for for Bangladesh um the first class cricket as as Davian said it's just the same thing year after year and we've been seeing this for decades now I remember um back in the days when this fellow Stuart Williams this man would score 700 <laughs> over a thousand runs almost every season 
get called back to the West Indies team. You know, can't make his age. Go back to the first class season, make him seven, eight hundred runs again. Get called. So I mean, we have been seeing this for years. Even I mean, Devon Smith, you know, people like those. They tend to dominate regional cricket, and we're seeing it again. Um, in in this new dispensation where we have the same set of players dominating the regional cricket, they get called up to the test team, and it's just a, 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 a roundabout basically with a lot of these players. So I am hoping that we'll see some new players coming through. Um, one 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 player I must mention, uh, Alec Athanes. I am really looking forward to what he will do. I think we might get to that um, later down, players to look forward to. But I hope he's one of the young players that will just dominate regional cricket and take that into international cricket. All right. No. And one, okay. one, one, one final thing. I think it's about time our regional batsman learn to play spin. I am tired of seeing, well, not so much spin, slow bowling. I am tired of seeing bowlers who just turn over their arm. Worse than it from all. <laughs> yes, slower than a fast bowler getting <laughs> so many wickets in the regional tournament. And we selectors are scared to even pick them in a squad for test cricket because we know that the quality is not really there. So our batsmen really need to start dominating these bowlers and, and so that our, our spin bowling can also improve in the region. Because I think we have some innocuous slow bowlers who are taking too many wickets in our regional competition. Definitely, definitely. I agree a hundred percent. Now, Davian, looking at this, right, just to go back to your point where you said, you know, we're gonna draw one of the games. Right? I'm just going by the numbers here. So this is 2023, Davian. A win percentage of 16%. We draw two games. So a draw percentage of 33, and there's a 50% chance, well, 50% loss for 2023. And can you just revisit your expectations again? You said we're going to beat England 2-1. Right. Beat Bangladesh 2-0. Right. <laughs> that would be a win percentage of 67%. Right, right. Well, I'm an optimist. Uh, to be honest, even though the statistics right now not pointing to that, but I remember when we tour Bangladesh with a very a severely weakened team, and it was said that we we're going to lose 2 0. We actually beat Bangladesh 2 0 in that East Test series. Also, uh, so um, so early in the order, I see 2023, we predicted that we're going to beat um, England, no, England was going to beat us rather. In the ODI series, I actually won that. So I, I, I really, the new players, especially Alec Altanese and Kurt McKenzie, with their positive um, style, style of play, play. Yeah. I really think that energy will rub off on the other players. So I think those two play their impact players, and once they go out and play positive cricket, and others see where it's working. I think the others will um, play along. Because even Kirk, um, Craig Baxter, he's a defensive batter most majority of the time. But I've seen in his where he has gone out and bat, and his strike rate is way over 60, and his score runs. So, like Ricardo mentioned, just a mindset, mindset shift. And I think certain players willing to be brave and show that mind, mindset shift, it will... Rub off on other players. Definitely. I'm glad you brought up that point that Ricardo mentioned earlier about that negative mindset from the captain rubbing off on the player. So, um, Kurt McKenzie and Athane, Athane, as we pointed out. All right. So, let's get into now um, expectations. So, this is the statistics or leading run scorers for 2023. Now, Gonna pose a question to you first, Davion. Who do you expect to be the leading run scorer and one player in particular that you think is gonna stand out with the bat? Don't have to be the leading run scorer, but one player you think that's gonna stand out with the bat. 
for 2020 uh, so, Super Bowl West Indies. So I think for the ball for 2004 retest match, I think it's Alec Atanese will be the, the standout player. For the leading run scorer, I would say Craig Brathwaite again. He tends to do very well in the first innings. Unfortunately, his performance second innings is quite dismal. So this is my prediction for the test. All right. Now, Ricardo, same question to you now. One player thing that will stand out for test in 2024. And who do you predict to be our leading run scorer for the year? Well, uh, I am going with Alec Atanese on both counts. Reza Bean, we're going to Australia. Um, I believe his style of play, Australian conditions will be conducive to that. Um, the pitches are generally true in Australia. And if you go there with a positive mindset, you're going to make runs. I believe he will do that. And I believe he's going to make some runs down Australia. Same thing in England. I think his technique is solid enough, tight enough for the moving ball. And you get value for your shots in England as well. Outfields are normally really Very good fun. over there, right? So you do get value for, the, for your shots. So I think I mentioned him earlier. So I, I guess that was a hint that I'm looking to him as our test batsman this year. And, you know, to make a lot of runs for us in, in the test arena. All right. All right, let's let's add a, another component to it. Let's make it interesting. Seven test matches. Do you, do you see Athenes then getting over 500 runs? Uh, I, I think if we had a stronger batting lineup, I would say yes. But I am I am uh I'm more thinking close to 400 maybe a little over 400 all right a little over 400 all right all right so we saw the leading wicket taker last year 22 wickets and by the way moti took 19 wickets against zimbabwe in in that two match series so is the numbers are kind of skewed for moti but Moti and Alzari, they were our best two test bowlers last year. So I'll start with you, Ricardo. Who do you think is going to be our leading wicket taker for this year, 2024? Bearing in mind the conditions, England, Australia, and of course the Caribbean. Alzari. I, I, yeah. Australia, he should do well there. England. I expect him to do extremely well there. And then back in the Caribbean, I think he's just going to have too much firepower for, for the Bangladesh batsmen. So I think that one is, is fairly simple for me. Any upcoming bowler you think that's going to surprise England, Australia and Bangladesh? Um, I'm not seeing any right now. Not, not, not seeing any right now. All right, Davion, same question for you. All right, so no for, the, right, for the, the ball out, the, the, the most wickets have the most impact, I would say Azari Joseph as well. He's a, He has really grown a material in his bowling. However, for the upcoming bowler, I'm paying close attention to Shamar Joseph. Right, He has the ability to bowl up to 145 kilometers per hour. And if you had Australian commentators are saying they're, they're excited about him and he will rattle some cages when he plays in the Australian series. I'm just going to leave a cheeky comment. I want us to look at the bottom there, Kyle Mayers. I think, even though he's not going to Australia, come England, come Bangladesh after the World Cup, I think that guy will have the... The best impact for us with the ball for 2024. Remember I said it? That's a cheeky statement. Look out for Kyle Rico Mayer's golden arm, Ian Bishop calls him. Right. But I, I yeah. realize they have done away with the experiment of bowling him in the, the power play in T20 Internationals. The game that he played, I realized he, was, he didn't bowl as a sixth bowling option. So I wonder if there's some concern about his fitness. All right, definitely something we'll get into. We'll get to the T20 aspect of it. Mm -hmm.